The goal of every medical student is to get into residency, irrespective of where you went to medical school. Even though I graduated honors from college, I chose to go to American University of Antigua College of Medicine. In this video, I'll explain why I made that choice. And the purpose of this video is to help the pre-med student to decide when it comes to choosing where they want to earn their medical degree. If you're new here, my name is Dr. Frederick Aqua. Currently, I'm a second year internal medicine resident in New Jersey. I hope you find this video helpful. There's a true story, so stay tuned. Let's go. Welcome back. So the story begins at State University of New York at Albany. I was a great Dane, thus highly motivated to achieve more than the status quo. I was a disciplined student, you know, did my very best to do well in my classes. At the end of my four years of education, I earned a degree in biology with a minor in Africana studies, and I graduated honors magna cum laude at that time i was considered a competitive applicant when it comes to applying to medical schools yet there was a hurdle that i had to overcome which was taking the medical college admissions test mostly referred to as the mcat since i was in albany the medical college that was in my backyard was albany medical college as a fourth year college student i volunteered at their affiliated hospital albany medical center and I was able to gain some connections to the admissions team. My advisor did her best and an appointment was set up to meet with this person. I did study on my own because I thought my study techniques were good enough for me to sit for this standardized exam. And that's where I lied to myself. I did not do that well when I took the MCAT. In other words, the score that I got was not high enough to put that exclamation point behind my application during that application cycle. So when I went for this meeting with the admissions officer, the plan was that I had been given a cut as to a score that I had to get on the MCAT to make it possible for me to gain admissions as a score that I got from the exam I had taken was a few points shy from what was expected of me. And the goal was they were trying to increase or improve in their diversity when it comes to the students that earn medical degree at their institution. So your boy had to work hard, your boy had to retake the MCAT and get that score or even do better than what was required of me. So like most candidates, volunteer hours in a hospital were not enough. Shadowing a doctor was not enough. Good um, letters of recommendation were not enough. You know, so to juice up my application, I decided to um, apply for a research program to be part of. So I did apply for one in my um, college, uh, University at Albany through C-STEP, and I was able to get a spot. So summer 2013, I was part of the uh, research program that presented uh, at the McNair Conference in Buffalo. So during the weeks of the research, I was also trying to find better study techniques. I was also trying to find which uh, program there was to help me um, do better when it comes to uh, taking that standardized exam. At that time, the popular one was with Kaplan. It was somewhat expensive, you know. So as time went by, my colleagues and I were preparing to present our research at the McNair Conference in Buffalo. I had a meeting with one of my advisors and the conversation boiled down to some uh, pointers that were uh, given to me at that time. So first of all, the question that I was asked was, what exactly are you going to medical school for? What do you see yourself as? Do you see yourself as a surgeon or a medical person? You know, do you like working with your hands? You know, do you like building relationship with patients? Those kind of conversations uh, were started by my advisor. At the end of it all, he recommended to look into Caribbean medical schools. So that was where the turning point 
happen. So this was me getting ready to present a research which will, you know, run back my um, application for medical school. Should I had taken the MCAT again and apply for uh, applied to medical school the following cycle, and now I had another option to consider Caribbean medical school. You know, so these were the two things I had to weigh, and I had to make a decision. You know, I had to make an educated decision for my life and for my future. If you've been around me for long, you would know that I've always loved to start my uh, my own medical practice. You know, with the goal of having affiliations, um, a hospital close by to the location which I choose. Um, I go to the hospital, see patients, treat them. God willing, they get better and they can follow me outpatient. And over time, I build a strong practice. And through that practice too, if there are medical students I want to rotate through my uh, clinic, they get the opportunity to do that. And uh, we build a better future, you know, for the field of medicine. To add to that, I did want to work with people who are 18 years and above. Um, I didn't see myself working with little kids, one or two year old, you know, where the stress of a parent can sometimes be overwhelming. You know, I wanted to work with people who can make decisions for themselves. And even with the elderly patients, at least they've been through life and it will be easier to deal with them um, uh, compared to dealing with uh, a little child and your parent. So it all boiled down to internal medicine because I didn't see myself as a surgeon either. Even though I watched a lot of Grey's Anatomy, I didn't see myself as a surgeon. So I started doing my medical school research. Initially, I didn't put in enough work when it comes to researching into medical school um, requirements and qualifications. All I knew was that I had to go through college, do well, get a very nice GPA, um, take an MCAT, a standardized exam, like how we did the SATs to get into college, you know. So I knew I had to take a standardized exam. So as to which medical school had this uh, requirement, you know, maybe this is the cut that you need to get for an MCAT score or your GPA. I really did not look much into that. My goal was Albany Medical Center close by. I had gone for a meeting. They said I was a great fit. All I needed to do was get a certain score on my MCAT and I'll gain admissions, you know. Now, I had to research into medical schools. Now, after having that conversation with my advisor, I just went straight into looking into Caribbean medical schools and not American medical schools. As a strong believer, I also put things into prayers and that expedited my decision making. So my search was very simple. I did search American approved top Caribbean medical schools. And um, the schools that came up were uh, St. George University, uh, probably known as SGU, uh, SABA, um, Ross, uh, AUC, American University of the Caribbean, um, American University of Antigua, College of Medicine, and, and some others. So I did apply to a couple of them, and the prayer point was, whichever gets back to me first, I will highly consider to go to that medical college. and. Well, if you've been on this platform for some time, you know that I went to Antigua. On their website, at that time, they had this um, uh, description as to their goal or their purpose of uh, starting that medical school. I think they had on their physician shortage in some years to come, and their goal of training medical students to graduate and residency spots in um, primary care. So that resonated well with me because in my head well i want to start a practice i didn't want to be a surgeon well it has to do something with primary care and with training i can also be able to handle responsibilities as a hospitalist you know and i can merge these things together so when i saw that i was like hey sign me up you know and their requirement for the mcat wasn't as stringent as it was in um, u.s medical schools so that was a choice I made that was the school that responded to me first and before I left for Buffalo to give my research presentation I went for an interview in their New York City office that interview went well it was more about 
me and if they saw that I was a great fit and what I wanted to do at the end of my medical education. So at the end of the McNair conference, I received an email that I was accepted and I was excited about that. You know, um, this was me thinking, oh, maybe I'll have to wait a whole year, you know, for an application cycle and had to retake the uh, MCAT. And now, hey, I got into medical school. What I also came to understand was that they had an affiliations with uh, Franklin University, at that time at Brown University, uh, for an MBA uh, dual degree. So that's what I wanted to do and everything worked out. So I earned my MD and also have my MBA through Franklin University. As to what happened in the Caribbean, the great people that I met, that island, you know, the impact that I had and all of that, will be in subsequent videos through the years to come on this channel. So looking back, thinking through all these things and uh, being asked this question time and time again by some friends, oh, why did you go to the Caribbean? You know, you were one of the smart kids in my class, blah, blah, blah. You know, I would want to say that to the pre-med guy, consider exactly what your plan is. If you want to be a plastic surgeon, I personally will recommend against going to the Caribbean, okay? If you're into primary care, um, maybe general surgery, you know, I'm telling you that you can go through the Caribbean and you can match into those respective uh, specialties, you know? But if you're into highly specialized fields, um, spine surgery, neurosurgery, orthopedic surgery, you know, it's gonna be very tough. I didn't say it's impossible. It will be very tough for you to get into those residency spots. You know, so pre med guy watching me, find a review course, okay? Find a review course, take your time, study for the MCAT. If four years of you going through college, just focus on that four years, get that awesome GPA at the end, take a gap year. And during that gap year, do your best, find a review course and get yourself ready. You know, at that time, 2013, there wasn't as many review courses. There wasn't as many resources out there compared to now. Your problem now will be choosing the best that fits your style. If you do the MCAT, you do well, just research into American medical schools and what they expect. They are cut off the criteria and apply. Just so you know, going to an MD medical school versus a DO medical school, to me, I think at the end of it all, it does not matter. When you're done and you're a fully licensed physician, your patient does not ask, oh, are you an MD or are you a DO? You're the doctor. If you take great care of your patients, they don't care about these stuff. You know, so if you get an MD school, sure, go ahead. DO medical school, sure, go ahead. So exhaust these resources first before considering the Caribbean Medical School. And this is my true and honest opinion. This video was not sponsored by any medical school. So I am giving you the best advice that I can give myself if it was 2012 or 2013. My wife always tells me I should have sit for that exam again. You know, the funny thing was even though I got accepted in 2013, I did not even start AUA in 2013. I started a year after because that um, August 2013, I got married to my wife and I took a year off to enjoy my marriage, you know? So I should have, I should have, but I got in and the rest is history. So thank you all for taking time to watch this video and staying to the end. Share it with a pre-med guy you know. Maybe this will help him out, you know? And if after all you've done, exhausted all your chances of getting into an American medical school, rethink what your goal is at the end of getting that medical degree and consider the top Caribbean medical schools. I'll see you guys in my next video. Shalom.